this is all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a crop nights game. Yeah, yeah. Crop nights game. Yeah, yeah. It's a crop nights game. All right, everybody, welcome back um, to the show. This time we have a new artist, an OG artist um, from HS Hooligan Squad, and that is OG Blackout. Yeah. Show some love. Thank you. That's good, OG Black. That's good. How you doing, man? Doing all right. My son, not you. He's crazy. He's a crazy one, y'all. <laughs> nah, definitely. I appreciate you for coming out and... Uh, Giving us a kind of giving us a bit of uh, knowledge and history. Um, first, we want to start out by uh, looking at your brand, uh, Stained Minds, um, yes, Brainstorm. Sir. Did you come up with that like uh, from Crump, or that just something separate you stirred up and came out with? Um, so Stained Minds is a little bit different. Um, I've been dancing for a very long time. I would say I've been from the Hooligan Across. Squad around 2006, and I started Stained Minds in 2007. And the inspiration for that is I've always been just fascinated with intelligence yeah. and thought. So I decided to make a, a clothing line literally based on the brain. Mm -hmm. And what Same Mind stands for, it's for the eccentric thinker, you know, for those who think outside the box. And that's why a lot of my designs are kind of unorthodox. You know, I, I try to specialize in making sure I got a lot of color varieties for people mm -hmm. and coming with things that, you know, not the ordinary thought process would, would come up with. That's good, really good. And what's your um, what's your market? Yeah, like um, your target market. So my target market is you know basically from I would say older teen you know to uh, probably around the 30s or 40s with the males and females. It's a unisex brand. Mm -hmm. So those are the demographics that I found to be most successful. I do plan to expand into you know maybe younger children and and maybe more doing more ladies clothes specifically. Um, because some of my stuff can be categorized as being more male-based, and that will help me expand my, you know, audience eventually with time. And then, where do you see your business going in the next three to five years? Man, hopefully, I'll be able to expand with the fact that I'm vending and have an e-commerce platform mm. uh, to be big enough where I can wake up in the morning and, and have that passive income on a monthly basis, and you know, maybe getting to a point to where. Um, you know, I can count on a monthly revenue. Right now, it's pretty sporadic. I would yeah. say e-commerce is probably one of the toughest markets to really break into because I sell a lot more in person than I do on the internet. So I've been just trying to strategize and figure out ways I can bring more revenue to my website. Yeah. And the more that I bend, the more that I put myself out there, the more traffic that I'm that I'm getting, and eventually that's going to turn into more sales. Amazing, great. And we definitely got uh, some of your product in the back. Yes, sir. Um, we'll definitely cover that um, after we get past this crump section. Um, definitely shout out to the district ladies. I want to acknowledge them as well. And uh, yeah, so you're an OG. You've been here for a long time and you're mm -hmm. kind of still putting in work, been putting in work. Is there any, uh, yeah, what, where do you see crump at now from where you came from? From where I came from, I feel like there's a big difference between, you know, how you had to come into the game when I came in versus now. And I have no choice but to respect it. Right? Yeah. And I think one thing that doesn't get enough credit is people that have come in and been able to adapt and survive and thrive through the different styles and, and different tempos and different influences in Crump, right? Yeah. And that's one thing that I prided myself on. Um, I think I've always had a chip on my shoulder, right? Like the hooligan squad, we kind of had some plight where early in our career, you know, we kind of had some slander and things from some of the bigger names in the yeah, game. Yeah. Um, and that really stuck with me as one of the co-creators. And I keep a chip on my shoulder to this day where I just feel a, a pressure and, a, and almost an obligation to make sure that I'm, that I'm tight. So that way when I'm spoken, when I speak, you know, what I speak is, is respected. Yeah. And when I came in the game, that's the way things operated, right? Like, yeah. you couldn't really talk unless you had something Some that you work. could prove on the dance floor, right? Because other people are not going to respect what you're saying. No. So I kind of keep that old school mindset in today's game and just try to... Uh, you know, pass that influence on to my squad and while, while, you know, motivating them to expand and, you know, do things different than, than I did yeah. when I was coming up. And speaking of that, um, do you see that? Because um, I see that in um, everybody has access um, to events now, meaning mm -hmm. like if you want a battle, you're just, you're there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's... It just got an inbox. It just got an <laughs> inbox. And I think people yeah. also do it to have people involved. Mm -hmm. uh, people also want to make revenue because they put in money. Right. Uh, people also want to try to spread the movement. There's a lot of great intentions, but I think uh, losing the structure kind of enables people to 
tap into their best uh, potential. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think that falls in where, like you said, back then it was like you had to be tied in the session mm -hmm. before you get an event battle. Very true. Because a, a session kind of uh, natures you in, because you have to house the energy of crump. Because right. I know people were saying, like, you know, um, mm -hmm. there's been live saying, like, you got to teach the es essence and all that. But I don't think you can actually teach that. That's something right. you have to experience. Like it was even said in Rise, it's like a spirit, and it kind of right. is. Yeah. You have to have the right people there to kind of manifest that energy, right. that vibration, a frequency, whatever, and you have to be on beat. Because, <laughs> 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 so, like, it's really, um, and that's really important because you mm -hmm. have to be within sync. If right. you're out of sync, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be eerie. You can, like, it's not, you're never really going to get there. Right. And I think um, the lack of sessioning, Mm -hmm. um, kind of keeps people even out of that spiritual warfare experience right. or whatever it is um, that they want to uh, the, the height of their experience and when people train in in crump now uh, usually it's the session like that's where you exercise that's where you expand that's where you grow mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now people are right. only getting a chance to test uh, their crump or knock out the kinks in a battle right you know what I'm saying so like and they're not really understanding why certain things aren't great or as good as it could be I think that plays a lot into the uh, revolution of Instagram, right? Mm. Everything now is about instant gratification, right? right. So if you watch Tide Eyes, who's one of the most successful dancers, whether you like him or not, not yeah. he gained his access battling, yeah. right? He gained his, his plight, his, all of his fans through the way that he would just kill people, overkill yeah. in battles, right? Tide Eyes was always dope in the session, but you don't hear about Tide Eyes in the session, right? right. Because that's not what people wow. are entertained by. It's not the drama. Right. Right. And unfortunately, drama is really fueled. I mean, Crump is really fueled by drama, kind of like wrestling would be. Yeah. Right? And that's why character plays such a big part. Like if you can uh, master a character in the Crump world, you really can start to be successful. If you can start to be a villain and play the good guy. Right. Right. Because people uh, attract to that and then they want to see you go head to head in a battle. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I feel like the essence of the session is being lost because you do need to experience it. That's why yeah. they say most of the best. Uh, experiences happen off footage. Why? Right. Because it's spontaneous. Usually that's a session, unexpected, and you know, some of the best things happen. You can really experience, really embody that crump. Right. If you've never been in a session where you're not the best dancer and you really have to elevate to try to keep up, yeah. you lose a lot of that competition in crump, right? Yes. And now it's just like, well, I'm chest popping, I'm stumping, I'm arm swinging, so I'm crumping, and the oh, audience yes. is going to cheer because technically I'm crumping, right? Yeah. Where you have to have a style, you have to have a certain way that you do it to even be considered in a battle, you know, when yeah. we were coming up, right? So I don't knock it because it is helping us expand a lot, right? Like, there's a lot of people who get dope quickly because they have to learn quickly in a battle. And sometimes, you know, taking those losses and getting beat up on, I've seen a lot of people get very tight very quickly, right? Yeah. And one of the experienced people that are very good now who took a lot of losses early in his career was Dredd, right? Yeah. Like, Dredd was kind yeah, of he's good now. seen as, right, like, oh, not being that good and stuff. But he would come Punching and back. he would compete. And now you can't, right? Like, it's yeah. not too many people that can mess with him now because of the fact that he became steel yeah. in, the, in, the, in the battlefield. Been so I think a lot of people try to, try to copy that formula. And that's why we see a lot of people skipping the session and trying to be involved more in battles. And do you think that is because of title? Like, people want title, so they try to skip. Um, they want for, that success. For, they want that tight eyes. They want that, you know, hey, I'm considered but, but, one of the best because I've proven that I'm better than so many other people in the game. It's hard to argue, right? But, but it's like, what? I mean, I, that's kind of hard to do now. Because right. I see, like, I wouldn't say crump as a whole, but some certain new people um, kind of make it a little bit softer than it was, so people are a lot more sensitive. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, do that. We still need that because that stuff was already done. Because also that stuff um, came with a fight to prove something to the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the world, you know, we got the same thing. People is that like, oh, this is a seizure. You know, you guys are having a seizure. <laughs> you guys are like shaking and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to fight through that to, right. to be, some, be something. Right. But now, like, they just have to, you know, show up to audition, do their best. Most likely they'll get it. Right. So I, I think it's, um, it might, it's not as necessary, but people that kind of claim title to say, mm -hmm. like, I'm the best at this and that. And then, like I said, most people don't can't maintain dancing on beat for a whole round. And they say, I have mastered the dance. Right. Well, you haven't even got to the step of advanced basics. How have you mastered the dance? Right. Exactly. You can't throw a jab on beat through the whole round. How do you master anything in the dance? And I think talking with Crush, too, he was telling me that people are lacking advanced basics. Yeah. And it's lost guidance, right? Yeah. Because if you don't have somebody there to say stop before you get in this battle, 
let's do this, right? People are just pushing you into battle because that's all they know. Because yeah. that's what they're being taught, right? Yeah. So you have no choice. And that's why I feel like the people that have been in the game for a long time, the fact that we still have the creators here, the people that have been through the gauntlet, it's important that we speak up. It's important that we Spoil. make our presence felt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's important that we make our presence felt because it's the essence that we got to keep. Exactly. True, right? It's like if no one's here like you to say, hey, where's your advanced basics at? No one's ever going to speak up on it. They don't have an issue yeah. with it. All you see is, hey, I'm on 10,000 flyers this year. I'm putting in work for crime. Are you winning, right. though? <laughs> right? And, and that's effective? one of the old school things in my group that I keep like, hey, you guys can go out here and dance, but let's make sure we're tight first. Let's laugh. Yeah. Let's come up with something new. Let's bring something new to the table the same way that we used to, not just be happy with the fact that, oh, I danced five different places this it, week. I think that's a pro and con, mm -hmm. like uh, bringing in something new, because I think that's a part of people's uh, being stagnant in certain places because they always want to do something new right. and they never um, kind of master the thing they're working on. As far as labbing, you know true. what I'm saying? I'm right. trying to work on this. And I think that's a standard back then we set too high because if you did the same thing before somewhere else and people see it, you're kind of like, <laughs> you're like, boo, yeah, it's yeah, whack. Yeah. But uh, then it kind of came like, if it's yours, kind of do it, expand and kind of revamp it and just keep building from it. Right. And that kind of wasn't, taught in that area era but back then like for us it wasn't we didn't have to learn it right. we were just kind of doing it and either establishing a style or figuring it out right exactly. you know what i'm saying and, and being an example for other people yeah and i do think that is important right that mm -hmm. you spend the time practicing harping on basics right and i have some people in my group that keep me true to that right like yeah. hey you know you got some new stuff but what about this right what about the chest pop what about the stuff what a, you know is, is it that really the best way you can do it have you done it 20 different times right? right it's like challenging yourself in different ways that you don't think about because you think you're past that already right yeah and i think that's what's going to help us elevate to that next level where the crowd can understand what we're doing more and more right yeah. and i think that's the that's the beauty of the evolution of crump like i used to be able to crump somewhere private right because if i go crump somewhere people are gonna be like what the heck is going on bro? Now <laughs> right i can go crump in public and people can understand like oh i've seen that on tiktok or i've seen he's, yeah. he's crumpy you know right. what i'm saying at least they understand what i'm doing to where you know um, we can start to communicate and people can start to understand the language and that's the first step to, uh, to us getting you know crump bigger and bigger you know yeah. especially in the states and so um yes yeah, that's, that's a good good point so definitely when we come, okay, the biggest thing, and it's always a topic um, just in uh, the crump world mm -hmm. generally is judgment. Right. Um, it's it's kind of hard for people. And I think it's hard because we have that, like, we want our friend to win. They might not be as tight. So we're either going to overhype or people are getting, which I think is really enabling, is people getting credit for just effort or potential. Right. Like, oh, you did great. You did your stuff. And it's right. like simply... You don't have to be so. You don't have to be so aggressive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be so aggressive right. um, anymore. But you could just be like, you know what? You did your best, uh, but there's still stuff you could improve on. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna say you're the greatest until you actually become your <laughs> right. greatest. Right. But we have a lot. The, the being the goat is so terrible now. Right. Is that, like it, it, is. it has no weight. Mm -hmm. But again, I look who's who's saying it and how much value they put in, and I'm just kind of like, it's not really not really effective to hear it from that person like that. Right, and I think that comes from, you know, people are being put in places where there's not that much crump at, and they'll be considered a leader, Yeah. right? And then they're spreading, you know, their influence to these other people without those people getting a chance to really understand, like, hey, you know, we still need to make sure that we're, you know, taking all the blocks that need to be built before we try to walk in the house, right? People mm -hmm. trying to walk in the house before they got a sturdy foundation. And that's why a lot of these crumpers that start out hot and build, they don't last the generations. Yeah. As soon as the style changes, as soon as something different comes up, they lose their motivation. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, I don't have time no more, and the kinds of excuses are being made versus them forcing themselves to, hey, it seems like I need to rebuild now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm going to make sure I use the same formula that I did the first time the same formula that's, you know, proven to be successful versus me, you know what I'm saying, rushing and, and just trying to get some clout. Yeah. And do you think, like, how, because I usually tell my fam this and stuff like that, like, how do we get the audience um, to understand what makes something tight? And for me, I usually tell mm. my fam generally in dance, you have three, kind of three things you can break it down to that kind of um, shrink it down to everything else. Right. And that's usually uh, clarity, musicality, and creativity. Right. And people want to all name all the things just because they want to know it and say they have knowledge. Mm -hmm. But, you know, creativity will bounce down in the character. Right. Musicality will have your timing and execution. That's all it is. But this is how we 
kind of define. You have your clarity, which is usually your intention right. or what you're doing to the beat. That right. that would make sense because this is the reason we put on the music is to move to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you accomplish that goal, you have your creativity on beat and we can kind of understand it either to the music or its intent, it's kind of tight. Right. But I think without having that musicality or just having a cool idea, a tight move, it's only potential. Right. Exactly. You know, you don't get the whole tight effect because you did a, a creative idea and it has a lot of energy. I've seen this a lot of time. People go crazy. Oh my God, it's so crazy, it's so tight. It's like, <laughs> man, he's bouncing off beat and y'all going crazy. Yeah. But it's like, it's not trying to get people to side with maybe what I think or what other people think Crump mm -hmm. should be. Right. It's just like, I want, I would like people to have the experience of like Crump for what Crump actually is. Exactly. There has to be some validity somewhere, right? Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to start accepting everything. And unfortunately, a lot of the stuff still dials down to preference, right? But as you start to learn, and this is something that I've learned, right? Like, I've been crumping for so long. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't need to. I can laugh 30 minutes, go yeah. battle, do something, right? But what some of my other members in my group have um, forced me to do, shout out, you know, my dog Guru, yeah. is, you know, he'll challenge me, right? How many times have you watched footage of other styles? You know what I'm saying? Like, look mm. at some of the other things they're doing, right? Focus right. on your footwork. You've been doing the same stuff, or, you know, you're doing the same setup. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you see things in different ways that I don't, and it challenges me to, to push myself and move forward. And I feel like a lot of uh, crumpers in this day, we don't have that, right? Like, yeah. You have someone that is seeing crump without being able to speak it fluently in the first place. Right. So you can speak simple words to them and they're satisfied. You need someone that can speak in a paragraph, someone that can put on a presentation that really understands how to use the, the language correctly yeah. to give you that real insight and interpretation. And we're losing that over time. And that's why people like us that have been around that understand it, we have to make sure that we're speaking up. And that's something I've been focusing on more lately and making sure that I stay relevant, yeah. making sure that I stay tight so things that I speak about are respected. 100%. Definitely uh, appreciate you coming out. Uh, that's our time now, some uh, great knowledge. I think an uh, educational conversation um, for those that want to grow, because um, not everybody wants it, but you know, it's always for those who do. Yeah, uh, yeah. so thank you, OG Black, for coming out. And uh, what we're gonna do real quick is